great thing. He's done great thing. He's done great thing. He's done great thing. Anybody know we've done? He's done great thing. Anybody know we've done? He's done great thing. Anybody know we've done? He's done great thing. He's done great thing. He's done great thing. Oh, great thing. That the world.
Hallelujah. Do you know that he's worthy to be praised?
eyes. What I'm going throughout my day, I think about last week. And I think about what God has done. Huh? That's why I'm still here. Huh? That means he wasn't done with me. That means his assignment was not yet complete. Come on, somebody tell him, the assignment over your life ain't complete yet. You're not done with what God wants from you.
let me let me tell you, he will bless you regardless of where you are. You can be in your car, you can be sitting in a restaurant, you can be laying in a hospital, you can be driving down the street. It matters not where you are. God can show up right where you are, and he can bless you. And that is our prayer that he will bless you right where you are. So thank you for joining us. We want to give you opportunity to give right now. And so we want you to know that there are uh, numerous ways that you are able to. You couldn't even pay for it. And so what God asks of us is so small compared to what he gives to us. And then he gives it to us in good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. He said, Well, I caused me to give it to your bosom. What a blessing that is. Isn't that a blessing? And so we ask today that you would get out what you're going to sow. Make sure you give him what, what, you, what he asked for. And then everything above, above that is your offering. And God sees your offering. He sees the seeds that we sow. Because we're sowing it into good ground. Because we're sowing it into him. He is aware. And he is conscious of what we're doing. And God will pay you. God will bless you. For your faithfulness and for your obedience. You know how the writer writes. And he said, I once was young but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers and all of those that came before us did it. And God took care of them. Guess what? God will take care of you right now. Listen, if you are watching that way on social media, there are a couple of ways that you are able to give. I know we go through this every Sunday, but we want to make sure that you are aware. You can give by way of technology, by way of cash app. I don't know what's going on with this system. But we need to figure it out. You can give by way of cash app, dollar sign, gift of life, 1651. Dollar sign, gift of life, 1651. Or there's people that are in the office right now. You can give them a call at this number, 319-232-3428. And they're there and they'll run the card for you. Or you can stop by here at 1651 Sycamore Street. There's a lockbox outside. It's a black lockbox on the wall. You can drop it there. Or there are men that are standing in the lobby and they will come out to the curb and receive it from you. If you are in the building and you want to give, uh, there is someone in the uh, lobby. If you have a card that needs to be read, if you step into the lobby, they'll swipe your card for you. Or if you're just sitting here, uh, and you want to give out the traditional way by getting up and walking around and bringing your offering and sowing it. We're getting ready to do that now. Or you can mail it to P.O. Box 362, Waterloo, Iowa, 50704. So there are numerous ways for you to give. And we thank God for those avenues. And we thank God that you all have taken those avenues and used them uh, to make sure that your offerings were sent in, that your tithe and your offerings were sent. And so... Yes, sir. And so as we get ready to come around for our offering, when the offering is over, we're going to ask all of our young folk if they would head downstairs. Uh, Super Church is going to be going on. So we ask all the young people that are here, um, if they would go downstairs, Pastor Jonathan and Pastor Shatora are downstairs waiting on them uh, to minister to them and to fellowship and to worship with them. So we ask that you would please stand on your feet. And we ask that you would follow the directions of the ushers there in the rear. You are in the hands of these minstrels over here. You guys go ahead and do what God has led you to do. And you're here to receive your offer.
When you have it, please say amen. amen. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did this sin? This man or did his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered and said, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifested yes, in him. Yes, now I'm going to read that one more time. Jesus answered and said, Neither have them sinned, neither this man nor his parents, but that the work of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day that night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had spoken thus, spoken, he spat on the ground and made a clay of spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is going to be interpreted for many, he sent him. He went this way, therefore, and washed. And when he came back, he came back seeing. For your hearing, and I want you to hear the theme this morning, strange things happen. And then my faith kicked in. Strange things have happened. And then my faith kicked in. Father God, we thank you today, God. We thank you, oh God, for this is the day that you have made. God, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for all that has already transpired in this service. This morning, we thank you for your precious Holy Ghost that has come in to dwell among us. We thank you, oh God, that today, oh God, you have been gracious and most kind unto us because you touched us with the finger of love and called us. Somebody to give them a little money so that they can make it. How many of you have sat on the side? 
soul. He suffered with fish. Boy, yeah. I don't know how long he suffered with it, but tell your neighbor five minutes blind is too long. The fact that he was blind and on the side of the road meant that he needed help. If he didn't need no help, he would have went on up, sat on the tree, was fine, did his own thing, but he was on the road and he was by where Jesus was passing through. And Jesus began to do what he does oh, yeah. best. Oh, yeah. It says here he saw a man which was blind from birth. Now that means he was blind from birth. I couldn't tell you how long you were blind or how long you went through what you went through. But I can tell you that it said this particular man was blind from birth. So he was blind all the time. Uh, when you have uh, blindness, people of God, I was studying and I was reading this. Uh, not only uh, uh, are they blind, but it is a place that has been a place of seclusion because many people don't want to take the time to help someone that's blind. Uh, they have seeing eye dogs. You hear what I'm saying? They have uh, uh, things that would help them get along the way so they won't step off the curb and break their ankle. Step off the curb and get hit by a car. You know what I'm saying? Seeing eye dogs and some of them have canes that they peck along the way to make sure they're not going to walk into something or someone. He was blind from birth. Uh, nobody had an answer. The doctors couldn't tell him why he was blind. Nobody knew why he was blind. But the situation that was there was that he was blind. Could not see. Right, right. Many people I know walk by him in the road. But Jesus passed by on this particular day. Oh, yeah. The title and the theme of my message, Strange Things Have Happened. Oh, you know how when you get up in the morning and you get you start going on your way and then all of a sudden you notice your gas light came on. Why did you see that gas light at that night? You're on your way to work, you know what I mean? And you need that gas, you need the gas to stretch you on to get to work. So then when you get off, you got time to get it. But you know, like me, I'm scared to keep driving, so I'm gonna have to stop over somewhere and get a little gas. You know what I mean? I don't want to trust faith like that. I ain't gonna tip God when I know how to go put some gas in my tank. This man could not be make his own self see. Right, right. Hold on. Right. He couldn't make his own self see. And so, he was on the side of the world and they didn't like people. They're going to come up and say, well, he must have did something. That's why he like he is. That's what we do. That's what we do. He didn't take his um, sugar medicine and now he's blind. He's saying, you know, oh, he did something. He must did something mighty bad. Listen, people of God, it ain't your business why somebody is blind. But your business is to lead them to God. Lead them to some help. Lead them to where God can come in and move on their behalf. You know what I mean? All of us have been blind at some point or another in our lives. You can sit here and think you wasn't, but you were blind in sin. You were blind with rage. You have been blind with lust. You have been blind with things that cause you to move out of your flesh. Preach, preach. Right about it. Right about it. So quit wondering why he is blind. See, we walk over people. We'll leave them in a minute. We won't come to the aid of our sisters and brothers no more. Times is different now. I remember coming up that they would bring somebody to my grandmother's house. And they would sit down and my grandmother would feed them. Whether they were hungry or not. She was meeting the need of that particular person. And they knew her. They knew Miss Mary Jane. On the corner East Fourth and Webster. They knew if they went in there, they could get something to eat. How many of you know if a person got 11 kids and some food in the house? Yes. One of 19 children get some food in the house. May not be what you want to eat, but it's some food in the house. So, they knew where to go. This particular day, this man didn't know where to go. He just was on the side of the road doing his routine. But along came a man 
Jesus. And this particular man had power in his head. He had power to go in and rectify what the enemy thought was going to be a life long sentence. Oh. This particular man, I'm sure, had other abilities. Uh-huh. Now listen, when you're blind, when I was reading and studying, they are keen in other places. Uh-huh. Why are they keen so that they can survive? Right. When survival mode kicks in, when you get through feeling sorry for yourself, when you get through uh, stop looking at your diagnosis, when you get through looking at the final thing that's written on the paper, when you finally say it is so, but my God said it can't change. When you get through looking at Like, listen, wait a minute, I'm concerned about what 
whether he was born, who if he said, if his mama said, I ain't worried about none of that. What I'm worried about is the condition of this man. Yes, yes sir. Do you know God is worried about the condition of you? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. And if you are desensitized, he's worried about it because he gave you five senses. And so, you guys, when you're blind, the other senses kick in. Uh -huh. Now, I'm going to give you quick scriptures. You guys can go back and look at it on YouTube or whatever you may, or you may have your pen and pencil out. I found out that a lot of people don't do that no more. A lot of people don't even bring the Bibles no more. But if you have your, your electrical, your, 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 your little hand gadget, amen, you got an area in there called notes. So you can take some notes so you can go back and eat on this word later on. Amen? Because he does not want you to be desensitized. So we have, first we have um, the ability to taste. And this particular scripture is going to cover two of them. Psalms 34 and 8, oh taste and see. Oh taste and see too. He's dealing with two. Oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless is the man that trusted in him. Now that's going to be my one scripture I'm going back to every single time. You want to know why? Because it goes with this man. Job 34 and 8 says to hear. Now we can, we have the sisters to hear. And that's what we have in here today, to hear. Job 34 and 8 says for the ear trieth words as the mouth tasteth words. So we're talking about hearing and tasting. Oh. And then Matthew 11 and 15 says, He that has what? An ear. Let him hear. All right? Then we're going to deal with the, the ability and the senses of smelling. Psalms 115 and 6 says, They have ears, but they, they do not hear. Noses, but they will not smell. Oh. Touch. Let's go to the ability to touch. First oh, yeah. Chronicles 16 and 22 says, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no more harm. That means don't put your hands on them. That's right. Don't put your mouth on them. Right. Don't even put your thoughts on them. Because he said he knows our thoughts are far off. Jeremiah 1 and 19 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Touched. Matthew 8 and 3 says, And Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately this man's leprosy was clean. Yes, sir. Now, God is using senses. He's sensitive to what we're going through. This particular man was on the side of the road, and the people were talking. Jesus saw him, and all of this stuff was going on. And the man, by this time, I know he's wondering. I hear all kinds of things happening. Things are getting close to me. I hear people clamoring around. I hear questions that I've heard since my birth. I am now uh, the subject of the conversation. I can tell you, he was sitting there, and I know he was hearing all of the things that were going on. Oh, God, what are they going to do to me? What are they going to do? Are they going to make me go farther out in the city place where I won't get any help? What are they going to do to me? I'm just putting it in my own vernacular. How I would think this particular man that could not see began to feel when all of the attention was on him. Normally, things was just normal. Every now and then, somebody will come in and drop two or three shekels in his can. Every 
tell one of the disciples, reach over and give him some money and let us keep going. All the people thought, well, what is this man doing in the dirt? All the people that come to spectate. People will talk and they'll talk and talk and talk. Let me tell you, people will talk. You know, I have the gift of gab. I can talk to a telephone post. Yes, sir. I'm just talking about me. Yes, sir. But nobody ever stopped because I was the only child and I didn't have nobody else to talk to. Yes, yes. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Right, right. And that at any time, point in time, I wanted to have a friend. She stopped speculating when you don't really know the inside story. That's it. Come on. Come on. You don't know what happened to that person. Why are they acting like they are acting? Why are they doing what they doing? Why are they crying in this particular area? Right. Right. But on today, this man Jesus was already hurt because I can already tell you the blind man had already heard it was a man in the city and his name was Jesus and he was healing. Could this be me? But because man is so familiar 
with pharmaceuticals. Let me hear you, let me talk to you just real quick about this. We are so, so fixed on pharmaceuticals that we feel like I got to go to the, get some more medicine for this, and I got to get some more medicine for that, and I got to have this, and if I don't have this, they told me I'm going to die. If they know if I don't have this, somewhere along the line, you got to start asking God to take me off of some of this. Yeah. If you are my healer, yeah. if you are the one that they say that you are, Stop! 
because we walk by faith. People of God, he's saying, it's time to get up desensitized. It's time to let all of your senses be in activation because the enemy is trying to take you out. But if you aren't within the five senses, I know that the man that hear the water so long over there on the other side. So let me hear, let me hear. Why y'all quiet? Why everybody ain't talking? Let me listen for the water. I'm getting up. I'm gonna turn this way. And I know the people is looking, but it's all right. My hand is up. I hear water. Next thing, get out of this bishop. Get out of this bishop. The next thing, you ain't never went by a body of water that you couldn't smell.
see me. If you're here, stand to your feet. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I am desensitized. Life has just gotten me down. I'm merely existing when I know it's more for me. When I know it's a water broke experience for me. When it's a salon dip for me. If you're here, I want you to come up. Blindness is not just by being able to see. Blindness can be in any acted area of your life. Yeah. 
Your name and everything. And y'all, this is our new family members. We take them in, amen. We don't do no vote. We don't do none of that. But we're going to let y'all know their names and who they are so now y'all can just see them and say their name, amen. amen. My name is Camille Smith. Rick Smith.
presence of the Lord that has been in this place. And what a word that has been delivered. Come on, come on, come on, clap your hands. Come on, let's clap our hands for the woman of God. Sometimes God will allow things to happen so that others can move forward in the things of God. Since I've been down, Pastor Judea has risen to the challenge. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Don't stand on your feet. Let's give God praise for her. Because when you're calling, when God is doing a thing, God knows how to groom us and prepare us. And I have seen it grow, and I've watched God use her. Uh, in this last month, since February the 21st, uh, and I've seen how she has stood and how she has walked in her office. Because this morning, uh, Evangelist Tyann was actually supposed to preach, but she got sick um, and had to go to the ER yesterday. And she stood up at the last hour and said, listen, I'm, I got it. I got it covered. And God has done in her what he needed to do. And the proof, the proof is in the atmosphere, ain't it? Amen. The proof is in the atmosphere. We thank God for the Smith family and for adding to us. Y'all come on. Let's celebrate them this morning. Come on, they make kind of like this spirit. They love Jesus. Acknowledge him. I don't fully know his name, but all I know is his Shayla's brother. Torian. How you doing, bud? I see your post and I responded to it. Y'all, the brother put out there a day or a couple days before Sunday. He said it's the gift of life on Sunday morning. And he's sitting back there. Y'all clap y'all hands right up. I saw it. And you're a man of your word. You hear me? And yesterday is gone. And tomorrow is brighter than what yesterday held. You hear me? Trust me. God has better. I just want to run these announcements real quick and we're going to get you out of here. We want to make sure that you got these announcements. We want to remind you of our Wednesday prayer. 6.15 and 6.15 on Wednesdays we thank God that God is still faithful to us even as we uh, connect by way of, of technology by way of the telephone that we still come together and God still honors the prayers of the righteous uh, and it still avails much and so we ask that you would please join us on Wednesday we are going to go back to in person prayer uh, and Bible study here real soon uh, and so we'll get that information to you as we uh, put that stuff on the calendar so um, we just want to remind you to still join us on Wednesday at 615 and then all of those that are celebrating birthdays in the month of March we want to say happy birthday to you and we pray that God will bless you uh, in a tremendous way and we pray that this next year of your life is better than the, la the year that you just came out of also and every time I put this out there's something coming up, but we're going to go ahead and move on. The devil will never, ever cause me to operate and live in a place of fear. Make me think uh, that he is going to do something to me. I, I, I won't give him that kind of power or authority. So we have a leadership meeting on Tuesday, the 4th of April, the last two to three. I've had to cancel because on that day I got sick. But the devil is a liar. We thank God that we are in recovery right now. We're 85%, 90% myself. And so we just had to be still just a little longer today. But we thank God. And so April uh, the 4th at 6 p.m., I need every leader. When I say every leader, I need every leader. If you can work it in your schedule, we need to be here. And so April the 4th at 6 p.m., then the trip to Colorado Springs, Colorado, uh, April the 14th through the 16th, we need you to see Sister Charlotte Gaffney. She is not here today. 
um, because she lost uh, her godmother in Chicago, so she is in Chicago. But if you are interested in going, let us know, and we'll get that information to you. Then also, Sister Trinity Jones, our junior cotillion uh, participant, June the 3rd. Uh, Join us for the Easter brunch on April the 9th uh, at noon at the GLC, in the GLC Fellowship Hall. Please RSVP by April 2nd. So they need uh, that information by April the 2nd. So again, we thank God for each of you all. We thank God for the word of the Lord uh, that has been delivered in this place. We thank God for the move of God that has uh, that we have experienced. And we thank God for adding to this house with the Smith family. So we are getting ready to go. You can stand to your feet as we get ready to leave. I say to you, man, as we get ready to step out the door, God is recovering you for a reason. God is bringing you. God has you in a place of recovery. And God is recovering you little by little. You don't realize that you've been in recovery, but you are. God is recovering and peeling back layers of things in your life. God is delivering you down on the inside. Because there are things that God promised that he would do in days past. And God is not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he should lie. When God speaks a word, it is forever settled. When God starts a work, he's faithful to complete it. God saying, I'm coming now to complete the work that I started in your life. You can't run. You can't hide. You can't get out of it. You can't change God's mind about it. You can't even say it ain't me. God said it's you. I need to finish what I start. This day. This day. As you walk out of this door. As the woman of God has already declared. God will spit on you. He took DNA. Because we were created in his likeness and in his image. He took spit out of his mouth that dirt that we came from, stirred it up, and put it on the man's eyes. When you leave here, things are not going to be the same. God said, I done disassembled some stuff to reassemble. God said, I pour up some stuff so that I can put things back together the way that they're supposed to be. I covered you. I held you. I watched out for you. But God said, now, nah, I'm coming to complete the work. I come to complete the work. Nothing else is going to satisfy. Nothing else will satisfy. Nothing else is going to take the place of God in your life. You know that drive you once had when you used to get the word and you would get up early before work and you would read it. You would seek God like never before. God said the days, the zeal, the drive. God said I'm restored. In the name of Jesus, I'm recovering you. But I have need of you, said the Lord. In the days that are coming, and what needs to be done in the earth, the testimony, people still need to hear what God brought you from, what God let you escape, what God kept you from. Even when you weren't living in the state of our mm. mm. Lift your hand. I pray for your father. I ain't wanted to know.
no details. But we believe in the healing power of God. Stages don't intimidate God. Because God went to the tomb of a dead man and still got him up. 